Hi, this is Alex from Origins of Audio, and in this video I'm going to show you Pulse. Pulse is a tool, uh, is that little nudge you might need if you come to a musical dead end and you can't finish your composition. Uh, Pulse is actually a one layer powerful sequencer. What Pulse isn't, well it's not an instrument and it cannot be used without you importing first some samples or groups of samples. And you also need to have the full version of Contact 5.5.0 and higher. With Pulse you can create your own sequences and export them to any DAW. But instead of doing this all alone, you can use Pulse's parameters and tools to build random sequences based on a musical scale or mode uh, or based on a desirable time signature. But we'll come to this after going through uh, the user interface and explaining the different menus and uh, buttons. So, this is uh, the main user uh, interface of uh, Pulse. Uh, every key, uh, button, slider, uh, knob, etc. Uh, has an info text. So, whenever you point your mouse at it, you will see uh, a help text uh, on the info panel here. Uh, for an ease of use, we will divide this interface into five sections. So we have the uh, export and edit, the sequencer and controls, the presets and key switches, the settings and time signature display, and finally the randomizer and group selections. Before going into each section, uh, let me show you the basic parameters, uh, knobs and buttons of Pulse. Right here, uh, you can adjust uh, the steps of your sequence up to 32 steps. You can control uh, the note values by adjusting uh, all the uh, notes on the upper side of the table by clicking and dragging the mouse up or down. And same thing for the pitch here, uh, the white numbers. You can click and drag your mouse up or down. And finally, uh, you can adjust the velocity of uh, its uh, step by uh, adjusting the columns of uh, uh, the table here. This section has three buttons for the export, one for sync and uh, one menu for uh, copy and paste an interval of steps to a different place on your sequence table. Your sequence is stored inside contacts MIDI object, so anytime you want to export a different sequence you have to reset that MIDI object in order to load it with your uh, new sequence. Uh, this is what this first uh, button do. The second here uh, is the prepare uh, MIDI object button and this uh, button allows you to import your sequence into the MIDI object and you're probably wondering how will Kotak know the base uh, root note uh, of uh, this sequence. Well just before pressing the uh, prepare MIDI object button you only have to uh, click the export node. So for example uh, if I press uh, the C node uh, now Pulse knows that uh, this whole sequence will be exported based on this C note here. If I press another note, let's say if I press uh, the uh, G here as you see, and then again I press reset and then prepare me the object, uh, now all this sequence will be exported based on my G note here. The last button which was, it was actually a, an empty hand, and now that I pressed the prepare MIDI button, uh, became a, a pointing hand, is uh, the drag and drop button. Once you prepare your sequence and import it onto the MIDI object, you simply drag and drop this button on your desirable track on any DAW. When you export your sequence to a DAW, it would be better if you have already set the same time signature to your sequence. So if I want to export uh, a 98, uh, sequence, then the same time signature should be applied on my DAW on the export position. Next we have the sequence, uh, the sync button, I'm sorry. This will help you sync your sequence to the first downbeat of your tempo. If it's not pressed, uh, then uh, the whole sequence will not be synchronized. If you run contact as a standalone, then make sure to click uh, this button here, the play button, uh, on your metronome. Uh, if you have it again on standalone, uh, it will be like this. So you have to go to uh, master, open it, and then click the play button. If you run contact as a host on uh, as a host plugin on a DAW, then uh, this uh, external sync will be automatically uh, turned on. 
so you don't have to do anything you actually only have to uh, do is press uh, the sync button on uh, pulse finally we have the uh, edit menu from where you can copy and paste uh, steps to uh, another uh, step on your sequence so let's say that I want to copy step one two three and paste it after step three meaning the four five and six steps so I choose here uh, to paste it after step three and if I press copy and then paste all the uh, note values, the velocity and the pitch will be copied. Let's move on to sequence and controls. We have already spoke about uh, controlling uh, the note values, uh, velocity and pitch. So how can I have better control over my sequence? Let's say that I have created uh, this sequence here. Okay, but uh, I find it to be very slow in this tempo. Uh, what I can do is go uh, on these arrows here and press uh, the arrow that point down. This will uh, automatically uh, decrease my note by one value. So the eighth notes will become sixteenth notes and the quarter notes will become uh, eighth notes. So if I play again it became more faster. If I wanted to be more slower, then... Okay, so uh, let's now say that I have uh, this sequence that I really like, but the only thing that I don't like is that it doesn't start from uh, the point where I feel that it should start. Um, the thing that I can do is click one of these two big arrows here and what they do is actually uh, cycle all the visible sequence elements, parameters, meaning the note values, uh, pitch and velocity, towards the direction of the arrow. So if I press uh, the right arrow, then all these elements are cycled through. So if I wanted my uh, sequence to start by minus three semitones from the root note, I have a different I have a different groove, and now uh, we'll come to this uh, to this pair of arrow, which uh, actually allows you to uh, adjust the pitch by a plus minus one semitone. So if I press the up arrow, it will increase. So again, I have my root note here. And finally, uh, the last pair of arrows uh, let you uh, increase uh, the velocity of the visible steps. So if I press a couple of times the up arrow, then I have a bigger velocity. If I press a couple of times the down arrow, I have a, a smaller uh, velocity. We will skip some uh, sections and go to the randomizer and group selection section. Uh, down here, uh, you can uh, choose the groups that you have already imported on contact on contacts uh, engine. Uh, engine. So by pressing uh, the arrows here, I can choose all uh, the groups that I have imported uh, here. Right. Um, these uh, three buttons here are the randomizer buttons for uh, notes, uh, velocity, and pits, respectively. Uh, for all these parameters, I can choose an interval and just press the corresponding randomizer button. So let's say, for example, that I have here the pitch already chosen, let's say, uh, minus five semitones to plus six se semitones. If I press the randomizer button, then my values here will be uh, adjusted according to my selection uh, here. Again, let's say uh, I will choose on the velocity uh, from zero to 104. Again, if I press the randomizer button, this will be uh, random selections of these values. Uh, note now that um, if you choose uh, zero on velocity, this will correspond to a rest, if any occur. So let's say, for example, here that, not here, let's put it here, that uh, my value here is zero. So this will be my rest and the duration of the rest will be uh, in according to the note value above here. So if I play now, 
I have select the guitar. Let's select the bass. And if I want a, a smaller rest, or even a smaller rest, I can do it like that. Now, uh, notes uh, values can be set in two ways. One is an, uh, as an interval, and one by choosing individually the notes we want to include in our randomizer button. You can choose individually uh, the notes by pressing this button here. Uh, and this, uh, by pressing this button, this note panel will appear here. And I can choose all the notes I want to include on my randomizer by uh, clicking on the small rectangles here. Uh, so let's say that I want to choose uh, the 8th and the 16th notes. I close again the panel by pressing the same button and now I click the randomizer. And now here you can see that uh, the randomizer only chose the uh, 8th and 16th notes. Uh, if I want to select notes as an interval, then I have to deselect all the notes on the note panel and now uh, my interval will work like this. Note here that uh, 1, the value of, of 1 is actually a double whole note. The value of 2 is a whole note. The value of 3 is uh, a half note, etc. The value of 9 is an 8th triplet and the value of 10 is a 16th triplet, as you can see on the info panel down. So if I want to choose, let's say, from 3 to 6, and again I hit the randomizer button, then I get all the notes that I have chosen on a random base, of course. Uh, so let's move on now to uh, the settings and uh, time signature display. In any adjustment you make, and it will influence your sequence time signature, uh, this uh, display uh, here will automatically adjust as well. So if I increase my sequence by one step, uh, the time signature display will also change. Uh, you might have noticed, let's say, this um, the word approximately in certain time signatures. This is an indication that you have to make adjustments to your sequence till it displays exact either by uh, adjusting the steps or by uh, adjusting uh, the note values of your sequence. Uh, the approximately sign will appear when you didn't set an exact time signature from the menu uh, down here, since Pulse will random generate notes from uh, the active steps you have chosen. On the set scale menu, you can choose up to five musical scales, six modes and two arpeggios, minor and major. Once you have uh, uh, chosen a scale or mode and press the randomizer button, then, you, uh, then your random sequence will be generated by all notes of that scale, uh, plus, one, minus octave. And this uh, interval here will no uh, longer be taken into consideration by pulse. And take into account that um, Every scale mode has at least two basic notes uh, which creates that specific musical feeling. For example, on the minor uh, scale is that minor third. So if I press the randomizer button, you will always see uh, that uh, third interval here. Uh, again, if I choose, let's say, the blues notes, the blues scale, I'm sorry, uh, and again I press the randomizer button, then you will uh, always see that fifth and sixth semitone which gives that blues feeling. Same thing goes for all the other scales and modes. Uh, the two arpeggio modes are set to uh, 14 steps, so it will be wise if you choose 14 steps. So I selected already 14 steps, I press the randomizer button, let's, let's adjust the fixed velocity to be uh, 96, and the fixed note to be, let's say, eighths, and if I play again, I have a major uh, arpeggio. As you notice, the set fixed note will replace all note value with the values that you selected from this menu. And the uh, fixed velocity 
we'll set uh, the effects velocity to all uh, the visible steps here. Finally, we have the presets. There are 14 different preset slots where you can store some of your ideas. Uh, click the preset stack buttons uh, to cycle through all uh, 14 presets. You can adjust any key switch of uh, your uh, presets by clicking uh, each value separately. Uh, note that you cannot have one note assigned to two different presets since when adjusting, uh, let's say uh, this preset, which is actually the first preset, uh, it will go to the next available uh, empty node. Uh, on contacts keyboard, presets of stack number one are marked as red, as you can see here, and stack number two are marked with uh, the green color. Next to it, uh, key switch, there's a text value where you can write the name of your preset. And next to it, there are two buttons uh, for loading and saving each preset separately. The reason for which we use different load and save buttons for each preset was for an ease of use. And you will find it more handy to be able to load, for example, on the fly the next preset while playing another preset. Uh, this key button here activates and deactivates the key switches on your MIDI keyboard. So if you have, uh, uh, for, for example, loaded uh, an instrument uh, that notes are mapped or across or close your MIDI keyboard, by deactivating key switches here, uh, you can also use these notes uh, while playing on your MIDI keyboard. And you can still load your, your presets while playing by clicking uh, the load buttons here. So that's all for today. Please leave a comment and let us know your thoughts and what modifications you'd like to see in our next update. Uh, I'm Alex, thank you very much for watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe.